time for another episode of Wrapped Up. <laughs> It's time for another episode of Wrapped Up where I've unwrapped all of my 2021 I've unwrapped, I've wrapped, what did I say? I've wrapped all of my 2021 releases and I unwrap one and I read it. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> now, here's the thing. We are still in some, not a reading slump in terms of like pure numbers, right? And in terms of how I feel about my reading, I feel like I'm not where I want to be in terms of my like attitude and excitement towards reading. So we're going to try and rectify that. Well, I mean, we have no choice, but like we'll, we'll attempt it. I am tempted because of that. I think we are, hmm, yeah, I think we're going to unwrap two in this video, unless the first one is one that I'm like desperate to read. We're going to unwrap two and pick one of them, which is something I used to do like last year at this point in the series. I feel like giving myself the choice, um, especially when I'm like not reading much at the moment is the correct and moral thing to do. So where should we begin? Um, okay, I am drawn to this one for some reason. Let's see what this is. Ah, okay, I always get so nervous. Let me in. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this is Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead, which is this the book to get me out of my slump? Don't think so. Don't ever call me again. You are a low budget bitch. Don't think so. Mm, I see, I still really want to read it. It's not that long. It's only just 300 pages, but I've never read any Colson Whitehead and I just view his books as kind of intimidating and stuff to read when I'm really on my shit. And am I really on my shit right now? Definitely not, absolutely not. So let's unwrap another one. And if I don't want to read the other one, we will read this because it's something that I feel like I should read and I will enjoy. Um, this one. would you be? Hmm, I don't know. Oh, this is horrible. Yeah, we're gonna go for this one. I don't know what this is. It's a paperback. Oh my God, I feel sick. Let me in please. Oh my God. Oh! <laughs> no, it was a mistake. Okay, so then we've got the Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna which is a fantasy that I have been really excited to read, but I don't, I don't know if either of these are like the thing to get me out of my slump. I mean, I don't know what I was hoping for with what is left here. <laughs> I don't know what to go for you guys. Let's go with the Gilded Ones. I think I'm feeling this more. It's a beautiful spray in edition. It's YA, so it's gonna be easier to read. Yeah, I've been really excited to read this. So let's get into this. Let's read the Gilded Ones. Is this a series or is this a standalone? I don't know, we'll find out in the next clip. We'll read this, okay. Oh my God, I feel sick. <laughs> okay, everyone, let's chat. <laughs> I come to you as a woman with something to confess. <laughs> I filmed that unwrapping clip in March. In March, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was supposed to be for March's episode of Wrapped Up, which you may have noticed never Never came. Or you may not have noticed. Either's fine. Either's fine. <laughs> Just because of the videos I was doing, I didn't end up getting round to doing a wrapped up in March. And so it's obviously April now and I'm supposed to read this. And part of me, part of me, part of me was like, no one has to know. I don't really feel it. Let's just film something. Let's film it again. <laughs> film me unwrapping something else and we'll pretend this never happened. But, but I did tell a bit of a lie there. But I, it's getting a bit dark in here. Hang on, it's making me look even iller than I am. I'm a bit ill. <laughs> I'm sick. I almost just pretended that I didn't need to read this, but then I remembered, well, I didn't do it out of, you know, goodness of my heart and my truthful honestness. I did it because I'd put it on a, on a TBR, Cluedo TBR, and I want to finish all of those off. So we are reading it. We're reading it. I am on page 92. I wanted to get to page 100, but I feel really sick. I feel like I need to like go sleep or something. I feel ill. So I was like, let me check in right now. That's something I can do. I... Mm... <laughs> So I just finished The Raven Boys, right? Which was like, no. Um, okay. No, no, didn't really, didn't love them. Yeah, The Raven Boys was a bit of a disappointment for me. And like, it's not getting much better. I'm not loving it. <laughs> so basically our main character we're following in the town that she lives, there's like a test for purity. And then these monsters arrive on the day of the test of purity and she gets them to like stand down and turn around. This special being with like, 
gold running through her veins that they fear and like say is a demon and they try to like cast the demon out of her and kill her essentially and then she's recruited this is all in the synopsis on goodreads so i think it's all okay to say she's recruited to be like a, a soldier like this the nation is recruiting all the girls like this to be soldiers because they're very oh because <laughs> they're very difficult to kill and that's what i've read so far and i'm just gonna be honest the writing we've gone from writing that was giving too much at times in maggie steve water she was giving you know it was a lot to writing that isn't giving enough <laughs> just feels like really simple ya and so i was kind of thinking to myself okay so maybe it's just you know it's just meant to be for younger audiences but this book is quite gory like when it goes there in terms of death or whatever like it goes there and so i it's it sits in a strange place in the ya market and i'm not saying younger readers like when i was like 13, 14, I probably would have read something like this. But like being able to read something and it being targeted towards those people is two different things. So I'm like, who is this targeted towards? I'm not sure. It reminds me a lot of when I read Cinderella is Dead and I didn't really like the writing in that because it felt so simple and it felt like very heavy on YA tropes we've seen a billion times before. But also there is like there is a discussion that needs to be had around how I'm I'm not stating that as a criticism necessarily, I'm stating it as a fact, not a criticism, because that shouldn't be a criticism we levy at authors of colour writing YA, because for so long they couldn't access being published on, on a wide scale, let's be honest. And it was white authors writing those you know YA tropes black authors or authors of color should not be criticized for doing that when it's now their time to write you get me so that's not a criticism but it's just something I'm noticing for me the problem is more the writing I, I mean we talk about this we talked about it last week in fact I'm a writing girl first then a plot girl then a character girl and like other shit do you know what I mean the writing I like I just, I have to vibe with the writing. Me and the writing have to get along. It's not the vibe. Stop! Oh my God. Simple writing isn't bad. Like I would say my favorite book of last year, The Thursday Murder Club, had pretty simple to ma to the fact, <laughs> to the fact, no, to the point, to the point writing. But something about this is just rubbing me up the wrong way. I just think I need to be a lot more selective. And I feel like I am being more selective now with the books I'm buying with the YA fantasy that I, that I read. I feel like me and YA fantasy are not besties right now. We're not besties. I haven't been loving a lot of YA fantasy that I've been reading. So I think I need to be more selective. And I think I prefer older YA fantasy. So if there's any like older YA fantasy you recommend, I'm thinking like The Gilded Wolves. The Gilded Ones, The Gilded Wolves. The Gilded Wolves, is that older? Like, I feel like that's something I can enjoy. But yeah, a lot of the YA fantasy I've been reading lately I haven't been into. So anyway, I'm gonna go read a bit more. Hopefully I will feel a bit better and like look a bit better. Not giving corpse energy, excuse me. And <laughs> I'll check in with you. Not giving, come on, come on, there we go. Well done, son. <laughs> I'll chat with you when I'm a bit further through. Right, I am 250 pages in, so I've read that much, got that much left to read, and I'm still not feeling it. I'm not feeling it, I'm so sorry. I wanna cry, because I actually wanna love a book. Is that too much to ask? Is that too much to ask right now? Like, I wanna love a book. <laughs> Does that sound like something you want? Yes. Well, let me tell you, you'll never get it. Yeah. yeah. It's feeling like a two star at the moment. Now let's start with a positive, right? Let's start with probably the main positive for me is that Namina Fauna is absolutely incredible at describing scenes in ways that you can really visualize them. A problem I often have with like fantasy that I rate low pretty much all the time is that I can't picture it. Like the world, the atmosphere, the settings that we're in, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Or just like action scenes, I can't 
picture it at all. <laughs> Usually that's like the number one thing that I struggle with when I'm not liking a book or the writing's not really vibing. But I think you can really really visualize everything and i looked at the back and the namina ford is actually a screenwriter the book is actually written as if it's a movie you can imagine in your head do you know what i mean like you can really picture the settings it's very cinematic settings it's very like grand you know real aesthetic themed settings and so i feel like that you can really see that you can really see that playing off well now that's my that's my plus guys if you don't want to hear any bad news walk on out right now Get on it. No, it's get on up when you're down, baby. Take a good look around. And no, okay. Oh. <laughs> I am very uncomfortable with the energy that we've created in the studio today. Other than just like, I don't like the writing. And that's a personal thing, right? So like, when I say I don't like the writing, that should be your sign that if I don't like that book, and I don't have many other big problems with it, that this is a personal thing other people could love this but i feel like a lot of the character development is very shoehorned like characters will come to like grand realizations will be like i've changed so much oh my god i've changed oh i've changed and it's like but what like i haven't seen you for like 80 pages like how is this where is this realization come from like it doesn't make any they were like oh i'm, I'm a different person i'm like but what has caused you to become a different person. We haven't seen that journey. Characters like flip a switch and they're like, oh, oh, new personality trait, oh. It doesn't feel realistic. It doesn't feel realistic in any way, shape or form. And there is far too many side characters on this. Far too many side characters. Like there's so many other girls and boys at this kind of like training school that they're at to fight these like demon death shriekers. <laughs> there's so many of them and we often won't see one of them for like 80 pages or like 100 pages and then they just like say a random line and I'm like I, ha I have no idea who any of you are. <laughs> like even the ones that we've had a bit of an introduction to and like had some backstory on I get them all mixed up with one another so I'm like what like there's far too many characters we've got our main character we've got her busy mate we've got the love interest beyond that i don't need many people you can introduce me to them once but then like continuing on in the story i'm just getting confused as to who these people are like i just i don't remember any of them so they're my biggest negatives and i yeah just the writing i'm just not vibing with it like i said it is quite gory like there's a lot of death and a lot of war in this but it reads as if it's for younger audiences so i'm just struggling to figure out who this book is for and what its intention is which i'm really sad about i wanted to love this i have a great edition i thought i would really love it i will hopefully check in with you later this afternoon or this evening having finished this because i'm just gonna go finish it now <laughs> please don't look at me <laughs> i hated it i i feel so bad i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i hated it <laughs> hated it so much the most hideous experience for me to go through how horrible and shit i hated it I hated it. I really need to like figure out what YA fantasy I actually want to read. I feel like I actually don't have that much left on my on my TBR. But like, uh, uh, this wasn't it. I should have read Cops and Whitehead. <laughs> Just the writing was so over dramatic, like so unnecessarily over dramatic. Like, <laughs> I hate like writing that is just so like characters reacting and such like everyone's like <gasps> <gasps> Do you know what I mean? That's what every moment is and it's just like oh my god and it's like one note we have no <laughs> light and shade everyone's just like <gasps> Um yeah I hated it. The magic system was so confusing <laughs> so confusing like i didn't really understand the world or the magic system the big twist at the end oh my god saw it a mile off excuse me it is so obvious like what the twist is and what the whole reveal of the book is it was so obvious everything just kept, and this is like my number one bug there with books is like conveniency like everything was so convenient like everyone's plans were 
carried out as exactly as they were planning and everything happened in exactly the right way and I'm just infuriated. I can't even talk about it. I can't even talk about it. Get the camera out of my face. Get turn get the cameras off. It's like having a job 24-7 for two days on the terrain. I went through a lot of accents there. Don't know what was happening. It's late. Get that fire exit door. I'm off. No. This book, I need, I wanted to live my life today. Do you know what I mean? I didn't even fill up film any B-roll between this clip and the last one, even though I just like sat there reading the whole time because I was fuming. I was fuming. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just want my life back. I just want my life. <laughs> I hated it. And I think I would have DNF'd this if this was in a vlog with other books. I would have just DNF'd it. I disliked it that much. Like, a 1.5 is the lowest rating I've given out. Is that harsh? I don't think it's harsh. Let me go with my feelings. Let me go with my gut. It's the lowest rating I've given out this year, apart from... Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, which I DNF'd at like 120 pages. So this is like the lowest rated book I've read this year, which, you know, it feels right. I, <laughs> I think I just liked it even more than say Cinderella is Dead, which was another low two star for me. And like, I think back to, we had an episode of this where we read Survive the Night by Riley Sager, which I gave two stars, but at least that gave us something. Like it gave us something like fun to hate. It was a fun reading experience. This was just annoying. I really hope none of these authors ever, I live in fear. I live in fear that one day, I actually write a novel, which doesn't, I mean, that won't materialize. I write a novel and authors see my videos and they fucking hate me. And I'm like, please, like, don't get mad at me for what I say. I'm so sorry. Because <laughs> this is someone's, this is someone's life, right? Let's never forget that when we're reviewing books. Like, this is someone's, like, livelihood. They've poured their life into it. And a lot of people love this book. So me disliking it isn't the be all end all, right? But, like, I'm a book reviewer like it's my job to like <laughs> be honest with you and so I never want to like temper what I'm saying for fear of like upsetting authors I would still if you're interested in this book go fucking read it sometimes a lot of the time when I watch someone hate a book it can make me more interested in the book so like let's remember all of those factors whenever I'm like hating a book <laughs> I will say I liked the message of the books. Like, it reminded me a lot of Girls of Paper and Fire, but this one in particular, talking about, like, in it, obviously they go from being girls who are very controlled, having to be very meek, subservient, to girls being made into warriors. But in both of those equations, even though the expectations of them are, like, drastically different and opposites, they're still people trying to mould them into what they want to be, rather than the girls choosing what they want to be. But I feel like we could have gone a bit of a step further, like, the girls, like, really figuring out what they want, not what people are telling them they should want, I would have liked. And my number, like, my last, not my number one, but my last complaint, <laughs> is there's a character in this book that our main character kind of like looks up to a lot, right? And she'll ask her questions and she'll be like, I'll tell you that later. I'll tell you that later. Don't concern yourself with that right now. You're not ready for that. You'll find that out when the time is ready. Like, bitch, like, give me a few like little snippets. Like, she can't, they happened so many times. So many times. Like, I'll tell you, I'll tell you about that when the time is right. Prepare yourself. Like, girl, does any, then it ended up being a big tell-all of everything at the end. Like, I'm angry. What did she say? She's just talking shit. Also, this is very, I mean, this is, I was just annoyed at this point, but her, she let out a breath she didn't even know was holding in, whooshed out of her, and then like, <laughs> a paragraph later, oh, sound whooshed by me. Why have we got two whooshed in that close proximity? Okay, I'm getting petty now, but I don't care. Whooshed? Two whooshed's? Two whooshed's in close proximity? <laughs> I didn't love it, and I think for how gory it is the writing needed to be older i don't think it straddles that line it's written for younger readers but i think the gore will prevent it getting into the hands of some of those younger readers so one and a half stars let's all go cry because i'm very upset <laughs> Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know what you thought of this, if you have read it. I feel like I've just been a Debbie Downer lately and I don't like it. So yeah, if you've gotten to the end, comment the green or yellow heart emoji. I love you very much. Thank you for sitting through my suffering with me. And I'll see you soon in another video. Bye.